Howdy y'all, this is Ethan Bonreal, back at it again with more coming out on top, and this time around, we are going to go ahead and complete the second part of the Bro Finder date with Theo. So if you don't remember, Theo is a game developer and part-time petty homosexual. And so he hired us to go on this date with him to pretend to be his fiance because he wanted to show off to his former classmates at his high school reunion. Sound cool? Well... Our job is basically to make this nerd sound as cool as possible to all these people. And he's paying us very well to do it, so that's a plus, right? So in this part, I'm going to show you how to get one of the Not Safe for Work endings. If you don't remember, there are actually three total. However, this one that I'm showing you in this part is actually the hardest one to get in my opinion. It took me a while to figure this out. I'll show the other two in the next part. That sound cool? Alright, thumbs up. So let's go ahead and get into this. You reach the high school, a sprawling brick building in the suburbs of Orland. Balloons and banners decorate the front, welcoming the Illumini. You watch Theo take a deep breath as you enter and proceed down the hall. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. His voice grows quiet. Everything looks so much smaller. Your glance of concern seems to snap him out of it. Don't mind me, I'm just reliving old, tragic memories in my head. Theo approaches a banquet table positioned in front of a pair of swinging doors. Seated at the table, laid out with dozens of name tags, is a 50-something-year-old woman in a black cardigan and a scene haircut. Theo Matapang, oh, it's so wonderful to see you. Oh, wow, good to see you too, Miss McFadden. How's life treating you these days? Ridic fam, but YOLO XD, right? Uh, sure, YOLO indeed. Can we get our name tags now, please? She peers at the seating arrangement. You're sitting right here, next to the McKenzie triplets. You remember those girls, right? Such charming young ladies until they got into that whole fecal filly of that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so, Miss McFadden, I was actually wondering if you would seat me... Theo appears at the map and points to the corner. Right here. Oh, next to Crystal and Keith Horner and Jimbo Madison? Crystal and Keith got married? <laughs> Figures. Well, they happen to be the judging committee for tonight's contest. You're not trying to... She leans in close. Sway the judging, are you? <laughs> of course not. You were always such a sweet, honest young man. Very funny, Miss McFadden. I actually just want to see what all three of them are up to. Well, okay, but you're gonna owe me a dance, Theo. Of course, Miss McFadden. You know how to lambada, right? The forbidden dance. I can't wait. She glances over at you. You put a ring on this one while you can, kiddo. Theo's a real catch. You grin at Theo as he tries to hide his embarrassment. <laughs> Miss McFadden. It's the shy ones who are the real beasts in the sack. <laughs> Miss McFadden, please. Theo ushers you towards the door of the gymnasium, muttering under his breath. Uh, yeah. Miss McFadden taught junior year chem. I remember she did a series of lessons with radium until the school board had to stop her. She liked how the radium glowed and lit up in her hand. She would turn it over and over, muttering, I love you too. Oh, oh dear god. You follow Theo into the dimly lit gym, decorated with balloons, streamers, and banners. You make your way through a throng of twenty-somethings dressed up for a fancy event. Theo glances around at the sea, of, or the sea of faces, looking perplexed. Several of them rush over and assault him with handshakes and hugs. You grab a handful of mini quiches from a tray and munch away, trying not to feel awkward standing alone. After hobnobbing for a few minutes, he returns to your side. Sorry about that. I swear these guys didn't even acknowledge my existence in high school. I don't want to sound cynical, but I wonder if they'd even have cared to say hello if I didn't just have an article in the Tech Times. Anyway, how are those quiches? Very quiche. Quiche is actually a pretty funny word when you think about it. It 
sounds like some kind of bodily function. I mean, I suppose it does. I think I just quiched my pants. It's crazy, right? That sounds like something Ian would say. What the hell? That's, that's disgusting. <laughs> that is actually really gross. Uh, if I weren't so wound up right now, I'd be cracking up. Then don't be so wound up. Too bad I'm not here to relax, Mark. Oh, there's our table. We're sitting with Keith, Crystal, and Jimbo. Jimbo's the bigger of the two guys. God, did they just step out of a time machine? They look like the exact same assholes they were ten years ago. Then why are we sitting with them again? <sighs> They're on the voting committee. They'll award the winners at the end of the night. Most successful and all that. The, they're the ones we need to impress. Ready? Let's do this. He followed Theo to a table in the center of the gym. One woman and two men, one wiry and one husky, watched the two of you approach. Holy shit, it's P.O. Oh man, these kids are fucking assholes. I fucking love this part. Oh, hey guys. Looks like we've been assigned to the same table. Jimbo peers at you, trying to make out who you are. Holy shit, who's this dude? Is that you, Spoons? Aw, oh, dude, play the Spoons for us again. Like you did every Friday during lunch. Uh, I forgot my Spoons at home? Question mark. This isn't Spoons, Jimbo. Actually, the name is Matthews. Mark Matthews. I'm Theo's fiance. Mark, this is Jimbo, Keith, and Crystal. Well, fucking A, Theo. A boyfriend? It's about time. Weren't you like a total loner? I don't even remember you being at prom. Well, I had that boyfriend in Canada. We wrote letters to each other. Oh, yeah. The old long-distance Canadian relationship. Right. <laughs> what are you implying? It was totally real. It's just that... Theo is interrupted when someone clinks a spoon against their glassware. The din in the room dies down. The MC welcomes everyone and announces that the dinner and music will be followed by a who's who contest that will be judged by the trio at your table. You glance at Theo, who appears to be chewing on his lip. Theo pulls you a chair. You settle in as dinner is served. As people begin chewing their tough cuts of steak with determination, the lights dim. A projector begins playing a slideshow on a projection screen. Photos of the Illumini from a decade ago flash across the screen, accompanied by a cheesy soundtrack. A photo of Theo shows him looking distraught as he stares at his locker, its door covered with maxi pads. That is really fucking mean, what the fuck? Keith and Jimbo burst in laughter. I remember that! Oh man, that was so wrong. Yeah, it turns out Theo's more of a tampon guy, right? <laughs> yeah, that is really mean, actually. I would slap the shit out of him. <laughs> Very funny. At least I'm not trapped in a state of perpetual adolescence. Slide after slide of complete strangers flicker before you. Finally, after several minutes, an old pop song blasts through the speakers, waking you right up. As if on cue, Miss McFadden's head appears over Theo's shoulder. You can smell the alcohol on her breath. There you are, Theo. Let's dance. Oh, hey, Miss McFadden. Now don't you get frisky and take advantage of me, Theo. I'll try to control myself. Now don't be startled if I start twerking. Sometimes you gotta let the funk out of your trunk. Noted, Miss McFadden. Now if I bend over and start shaking my moneymaker, that doesn't mean you can just get all freaky and grindy and push your throbbing bulge against my wanting need. Oh man, this sounds like bad fan fiction. <laughs> I'll keep my bulge at an appropriate distance, Miss McFadden. And don't think it gives you permission to just reach up my skirt and pull my sopping wet panties off as you whisper in my ear. I need you now. I promise I won't, Miss McFadden. <laughs> oh, you certainly won't. Because I'm not wearing any panties. <laughs> uh, she gives you a demure, demure girlish smile. Oh. 
how has she not been fired? What the hell? And why do I get the impression that you've performed sex acts that most of us couldn't even imagine? Have you ever jump from a second story balcony and pale yourself on a hard, thick one? I can't recall ever doing that. Well, you have to try it. What a rush! I guess I'll be back in a bit. You look at Theo in a panic, as you realize you're being left alone at the table. Don't stress, Mark. You can wing this. Just stay consistent. Miss McFadden drags Theo off to the dance floor. You take the opportunity to work on your steak. Desserts and coffee are brought to the table. You watch as Mc Miss McFadden ropes poor Theo into another dance. You glance at Jimbo, Crystal, and Keith, who seem to have reached a pause in their conversation. All three turn their eyes in your direction, smiling through their blindingly white teeth. You know, I'm pretty surprised that Theo showed up. Seems like he's changed a ton. Look, I didn't really know him back then, so I don't think I can comment. I mean, no offense, but he was kind of a dork. I mean, just wondering. Has he really changed all that much, or is this some sort of act? So, this is the big decision maker for which ending you make. The route we are going to take, again, is the harder one, or the one that's a little bit less intuitive. So you need to very blatantly lie repeatedly. And that means we need to say, I don't know if I'd call it an act, but you're not getting the whole picture. He's actually got a secret identity. Looks at the camera. Oh, come on, you're shitting us. No, I'm serious. You gotta swear that you won't mention this to anyone, but... What? Nah, I shouldn't say anything. Come on, Mark. Sharing is caring. We're dying to know. Alright. I don't know what Theo was like in high school, but looking at him now, you'd probably think he's just a handsome, successful, well-balanced dude. But there's so much more to him than meets the eye. Like? Well, I met Theo in a minimum security prison. Apparently, he's been involved in some sort of financial dealings that involve hacking and pulling the strings of the world's economy. What? Look, you guys seem like nice people. I just want to say, be careful about your investments over the next couple of years. Another economic bubble is about to occur. You might want to be at the right place at the right time. Oh man, you gotta tell us more. Give me your email addresses and I'll email you some money-making opportunities. They'll look like spam, but they'll secretly be from me. Make sure you take them seriously. Wow, really? You're the man, man. I don't know, guys. This is sounding kind of weird. <sighs> I know it does, but I shouldn't have said anything. Just keep it on the down low, okay? I'm not supposed to be talking about this stuff. Jimbo glances at Keith. Keith glances at Crystal. In any case, enough about him. What do you do, Mark? So again, we gotta go with the blatant lies. I'm a bounty hunter. No shit. You sure don't look the type. <laughs> My bounty hunting code name is Kitty Cat, but don't let that fool ya. I stalk my prey in the night and strike before they even know I'm there. Well, that's certainly interesting. There's nothing I love more than watching the light drain from a man's eyes as I push my thumbs deep into his throat. Oh, hi. Aren't the bounty hunters supposed to bring people in? you know, still breathing. Usually, but I only take dead or alive contracts. So you get paid to kill people? Where can I sign up? You ever kill a man before, Jimbo? No, but I think about it all the time. I'm sorry to interrupt, but this sounds like a lot of hooey. Let me ask you another question. I'm all ears, man. I want to know about you guys' relationship. What's it like? Are you guys serious? So, this one is probably the most tricky one because these choices can lead you on some wild goose chases here. So if you click this one, it says, I'm not sure I could adequately describe how I feel about Theo. Um, you 
are put into a long chain of things to say about him if you say I would never give him up. And in fact, it ends up being the lyrics to the Rick Astley song, Incidentally XD. But I'm not going to show all of that because it goes on for a very long time. But that makes you think that you just need to do that in order to get the silly ending. But in fact, what you need to say is, to be completely honest with you, it's all about the sex. Oh my. He's wrecked my hole on many an occasion. He's what you call a hole wrecker. <laughs> Crystal, speechless, takes a bite of her dessert. I mean, what about you guys? Do you all enjoy having your holes wrecked? Well, honestly, yes. That's nice for you, Jimbo, but personally, I don't know, because somebody refuses to stick even a finger in my asshole. Keith! That's enough. Let's move away from this topic. Maybe it's best if this conversation took a little pause. Yes, that is a good idea. A moment of silence for all the holes that have been completely, utterly, and terrifyingly destroyed. Dot dot dot. Theo finally returns to the table. You made it back. I thought I had lost you. I'm alive, shaken, but alive. Hey, I remember this song. Would you care to dance, Mark? I'd love to. You can feel the eyes of the trio upon you as Theo takes your hand and pulls you to the dance floor. So, I didn't mean to leave you stranded, but I figured you had the wit to pull it off. How'd it go back there? I'm hoping you kept the story consistent. Oh, I knocked them dead. They were blown away by the things I said about you. Good to hear. I really appreciate it. Your bodies draw near as you dance. His fingers feel warm against yours. Heart beating faster as you hold his body close. You could almost believe that you were actually a couple. You could really be my fiance. It's possible, right? As you rest his head against your shoulder, you start to feel yourself more wishing this was a date. Maybe I could kiss him to make us look legit. His voice interrupts your train of thought. You seem like you're enjoying this. I think I am. Good. I'm glad you're having fun at least. You're not? I'm starting to think I came here for the wrong reasons. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Either way, you might as well make the best of it. Theo sighs and squeezes your arm. This dance is vastly better than that one with Mrs. McFadden. Well, she looked like she was enjoying herself. I actually think she came. Twice. Oh, oh god. <laughs> Theo. Towards the end of the song, the MC walks to the stage and with a willful and wide smile waits for the crowd's attention. All right, everybody, looks like our committee's given us their decision. Let's announce the results of tonight's contest. Theo glances at you, nervous but smiling. Remember, this is just for fun, so no hard feelings, especially if I win most attractive, most intelligent, and or best personality categories. Or just nice as tits. I'm looking at you, Stephanie Wilcox. Yours might be a little bit bigger, but... They look like big, sloppy floppers. I don't know why all the boys like you so much. I'll prove it right now. I've got the best tits in this entire godforsaken town. You guys want to see? A few hoots and hollers erupt from the crowd. You'd like that, wouldn't you, you bastards? That's all you care about, isn't it? Fucking men. Bunch of fucking users. You know what? I know how you're feeling right now. Emotionally stunted, sex-starved fucking perverts. <sighs> Alright, well, she's kind of getting into herself right now, so let's go ahead and move forward. The winner of Looks Like They Came to Their 30th Reunion and Not Their 10th. Oh, what a fucking surprise. It's Stephanie Wilcox, XD. Maybe try staying out, the, <laughs> out of the sun a little bit, dear. Oh my god, she's really coming for her. The stunned crowd remains silent. Wow, a tough crowd. You guys don't laugh at anything, do you? Huh, 
guess I'll just get this over with then. The MC rattles off a list of categories like least improved, most likely to still be a virgin, and why aren't they in prison yet, followed by the names of their respective winners. Theo seems absorbed with his phone, but seems to perk up when he hears the final categories being read. Winner of most successful? Crystal and Keith Horner for being the parents of four healthy children. Is there any greater success than a picture book high school romance followed by multiple offspring? It's the American dream, ladies and gentlemen. You glance at Theo and notice him frowning. And winner of most changed... Tracy Hemmings for her obvious new nose, breast, and butt implants. And the winner for least changed is... Theo Matapang. It's like you never left, P.O. Theo steps away from you, his hands clenched in fists. Oh man, this kid is fucking tilted, holy shit. <laughs> Look at that face. I don't fucking believe this. I do, considering the winners make up the committee. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it's just a stupid award, though I wouldn't sweat. Theo breaks away from the conversation and storms towards the smug trio. Have any of you morons noticed I'm not the same person? At all? I deserve the most change, if not most successful. Whoa, no need to get insulting, P.O. <laughs> After all, Tracy did get the laser vaginal renewal. Fuck you. I can't believe you guys are giving yourselves these awards. Oh my god, Theo. Do you really care about it that much? My net worth is about 12 million, you fuckers. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, how can we even trust what you say? Your partner here seems to act like he was making up those lies about you all night. I mean, you being some sort of super hacker and he's a bounty hunter? Seriously? A five-year-old could come up with a better story than that, man. Is this guy even your boyfriend or just some weirdo you picked up off the street? Theo sighs and put his head in his hands. The three of them glare at you. So this is the moment of truth. This is the final decision for this um, ending that you need to actually correctly select in order to get to the not safe for work scene. So if you pick the first two, you lose. He just takes you home and it's over. But you need to just go with it. A lunatic? Honey, I'm a rent boy. You gotta pay for a piece of this action, and then you abruptly start stripping. Screams of both horror and delight explode around you. Theo watches in disbelief as you jump off the chair, unzip your pants, and march up to him. Taking his hands, you lead him to the center of the gym. My god, Mark. You want some of this sugar, honey? Somebody stop that perv hurt! A couple of guys in the front stair are start to rush at you. You peel off your pants. W wait no, not yet. The guys stop. The crowd murmurs in confusion. Someone claps and hoots. A bunch of people take out their phones and start taking pictures. You bend over, backing your ass against his crotch. <laughs> Crouching on the floor, you rub your body against his. Oh, baby, that feels so good. <laughs> Holy fuck, let's get out of here before they call the cops. You run back to the car, laughing as you sprint through the night air in your briefs. A truck honks at you. You're guessing someone has already called security. Didn't know you had a side gig stripping at high school reunions. Oh yeah, nursing homes, retirement parties, magic shows. Honestly, that was my first time doing anything like that. Maybe it's a good backup plan in case this whole English major thing doesn't work out. I mean, you know. You should definitely consider it. What even compelled you to start stripping? That was pretty awesome. Well, it felt like the right thing to do at that moment. Well, I think you nailed it. And it's going to give everyone something to talk about, right? Anything for you. Mr. Least Changed. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe those fuckers. But really, maybe they're right. Maybe I did deserve the title. What do you mean? I still care about what others think or what their opinions are. 
People who have absolutely no bearing on my life. People I don't even respect. Not that, not that different from how I felt ten years ago. Except back then I had reasons to be pissed and afraid. At this point in my life, I don't even know these people. They're just strangers now, with lives I couldn't care less about. I don't even know why I'm trying to seek their approval, when there's no substitute for self-validation. Wow, that's pretty insightful. Yeah, well, that's exactly what my ex accused me of doing before we split. Kinda embarrassing, but I guess he was right. Oh, I hate it when that happens. Oh, I feel really silly now, but hey, it was worth it just to experience what happened tonight. That's pretty epic. Well, I guess there is the issue of your payment. This feels a little weird, but being a student, this money is really gonna help. I totally understand. Here you go. Thanks. I better take you home now. So, if you can't figure it out, we need to take this opportunity to let him know that we're down to have some sex up the butt. So, wait, you paid for a night, and the night isn't over yet, so smile suggestively. What are you implying, exactly? Well, I'd like to finish it off. Finish it off? Are you offering me sex for the money I paid? That's pretty naughty of you, Mark. I'm just saying it might be fun to roleplay. Let's go back to the hotel and we can discuss this further. I've already got something in mind. So I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be some freaky ass shit we're about to do. I, well, I guess I'm not freaky in the grand scale of reality and the grand scheme of things and the grand scheme of gay shit we've done so far in this game. But it is very different and it will probably either make some people laugh, some people horny, or some people be like WTF. But me personally, I'm just here to have a good laugh and get this video wrapped up. So... Theo drives you to where he's staying for the night, an elegant four-star hotel on the outskirts of Orland. You follow Theo up to a luxurious suite with a single king-sized bed. So, what did you have in mind? And, oh my god, look how he's looking at us. <laughs> Perhaps I can provide you some pleasant conversation or dance a little jig for you? Or did you want me to go straight for the blowjob? Da, da, da. Actually, I think it'd be fun if we pretended I owned you for the night. That, oh, that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Um, okay, <laughs> go on. Theo reaches over and removes your bow tie, tossing it onto the floor. He opens a suitcase and removes an item, which he hands to you. Put this on and address me as Master. My discomfort is really increasing here. Um, you stare at the item in your hand. It's a dog collar. So, you actually have two choices here that decide how this works. You can either say yes, master, and you will be in the more submissive role, or you can get him to address you as sir, and he will assume a more submissive position. However, this option, no matter what not safe for work ending you do, will always show you the same image. So, for this part, we're actually just going to do the Yes Master one, and I will show you this ending in the next video, because this video is already long as hell. Anyway, Yes Master. You put the collar around your neck. He studies... Oh my god, that look! <laughs> Holy shit! He studies you thoughtfully. We're gonna find out if you're a good boy or not. Oh my god, I'm about to lose my shit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Are we seriously barking at him? What the fuck? Feeling Theo's eyes bore into you, you can take a you take a deep breath and start peeling off your clothes. You remove your jacket and your shirt before you pull off your slacks, your erection straining tightly against your briefs. Now don't move while I inspect you, doggy. Oh my god. <laughs> I, 
had forgotten about this line. We'll see if you meet the breed standard for a horny little bitch. Or are you more of a slutty mongrel cur? <laughs> this is so wild. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. So if I don't know if y'all ever been in a situation where like someone like has like a fetish that you agree to entertain but you're not really into it and they start dirty talking and you're like, okay. <laughs> But that is really 100% how I feel. Like, I cannot take this seriously. <laughs> oh my god. Theo walks over to examine your near-nude body. He starts with your pecs, squeezing them one at a time. You shiver as he moves to your biceps, armpits, and waist, feeling and examining. His fingers slip underneath your waistband. Stroking and squeezing your glutes as if evaluating <laughs> pieces of fruit. Oh my god. Finally arriving at your now hardest steel erection, he rubs it through the fabric of your briefs. So if you can't tell, we are about to have very inappropriate sexual relations with this man. So we're going to go ahead and cut the video here. As per usual, check the description for a link to the not safe for work scene for this part. It will be a media fire link. And I will meet y'all back in just a sec. Alright, so if y'all have been watching these videos for a while, you would know usually after the cut is the time where I'm like, oh boy, we sure did have some good butt sex. But no, I'm not even going to say that this time because I am still flabbergasted that we pretended to be a dog the entire time we had sex with this grown ass man. That is so fucking wild to me. Um, we even fucking barked. <laughs> oh my god. And here we are laying in this bed after we're done and we're still pretending to be a fucking dog. So, you know, if you're into that, that's cool. I'm just, I'm still a little gagged. So, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go forward. We're gonna wrap up this video, okay? So, <clears throat> <laughs> who's the good boy? Dot, dot, dot. That's right, you're the good boy. Holy shit. <laughs> what a good dog. You truly are man's best friend. And here he starts being serious. You know, I'm flying back on a red eye tonight. Hit me up if you're ever in New York, Mark. I had a fantastic time with you. You grin, running your foot along his leg. I'm glad you had fun. I really enjoyed it too. Even if things didn't go exactly as planned, I'm grateful for that. It's been memorable. I really like spending my time with you. How are you going to have a serious-ass conversation after you just had a... Well, that's a spoiler, but you just had sex as a dog. What the hell? You give his face a big lick and nuzzle him for a spit before you'd have to depart. I am, like, mega, like, ultra... I'm just obliterated from that, like, emotionally. Like, I have laughed all the laughs out of my body, and now I just feel like an empty husk of kink. Um, so, thank y'all for sticking around. This is a long-ass video. Like I said, Theo's date is really fucking long, which is why it's taken me so long to record this. Um, it's been about four days since the previous recording, right? I also had a lot of hiccups on the way. This was a very rough video to record, for the record. I just kept having technical difficulties, and you'll actually see, or if you you probably may or may not have noticed, um, the screen size changes a little bit towards the middle of the video because my fucking OBS shit kept resizing, and I don't know why, but that's all in the past now, and I don't need to make excuses because I'm grown and I'll do what I want. So... Thank you all for watching as usual. I appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you were interested in this video. I'll try to have Theo's next part out within the next two days. But in the meantime, have a good one and bye.